Welcome to Hood Champion Boxing Sports. In boxing, you find a way to win or you find a way to lose. Eddie Hearn is licking his chops. And you can't blame him when you really think about it. Now, I'm pretty sure you all know that the IBF plans on doing what the IBF does. So they really don't care, man. This whole thing about Undisputed, I think the IBF, when they find out there's going to be a bout for Undisputed, I think they sit there and basically... Okay, round of applause, job well done. We have an undisputed distinction bout coming up, great. And as soon as the bout concludes, they've already kind of put um, put things in, in, into effect, saying, hey, once this fight is over, we're going to strip whoever is the uh, undisputed champion because we have mandatories and we want that belt in rotation. But the thing, I, I think the uniqueness about the IBF in particular is stripping, you know, use it because he won the fight. Um, is I know there's an overdue, overdue mandatory, right? You uh, heard of it, but it, they say it's almost like they say, "Well, okay, uh, we're gonna let the undisputed fight take place. Then we're gonna strip the IBF title." So Usyk really is only maybe two weeks the most. I I know they're going to strip him. Maybe you'll had a, maybe you'll be undisputed for like two weeks. And then they're going to make the Dubois-Hergovic fight for the IBF title. But, I, I, okay, so this, so the, it, it got defended for Fury Usyk, so the IBF got paid. Now they strip it and put it back up for Hergovic Dubois, the IBF will get paid. And then the winner of that, this is where Eddie Hearns licking his chops, they are supposed to go on and fight Anthony Joshua. And Anthony, I, I truly believe Anthony Joshua, if DeBaugh wins, I think Anthony Joshua obliterates him. If Hergovic, if Hergovic wins, I, I gotta be honest, Hergovic can fight. But the way Joshua looked, you gotta understand Joshua, he blasted Wallen out, which I think Hergovic would blast Wallen out of there. And then he damn near killed Ngannou. And I happen to think Hergovic would give Ngannou the business. So I'm not, I believe AJ beats everybody in the heavyweight division, but I know Hergovic is a different breed. He's fighting for something different. Everything about Hergovic is just different. So I don't think that's an easy fight for AJ, but he should get through it. If he lets his hands go, he gets through it. But this is, see, this is what I like to point out, man. When we start talking about these fights, because, you know, I'm not biased, but I'm, uh, um, I'm going to show you something here. Okay, here it is. Let, let me show you something about uh, about Flip Hergovic, right? I'm going to show you something about him that I don't, I don't, I don't think people are really pay, paying attention to, you know, because... I, I see most of the people comment and think that Flip Herbert is going to walk through, walk through Dubois. I, I think that just because of the, they have history sparring and Flip Herbert has destroyed him in sparring. Now let me pull up this other one here. Right, I'm going to I'm going we're going to do a quick comparison because I like doing the comparisons because I think it's important and it gives us a, a good idea of what we're dealing with when we're trying to do a predictive analysis on how a fight may go. And to just see people who just written off Flip Hergovic, I'm just like, yo, hold your horses. Let's not take it to the stupid. I don't, I don't understand how, how people figure that. Here we go. That Flip Hergovic brings nothing to the table. I, I'm gonna, okay, here we go. I'm gonna show you what the problem is right now. Okay, where are we at? Okay, here we go. I'm gonna show you the problem. But, but. Hearn is cool because his guy is about to, you know, uh, get in line for the undisputed. He thinks he's going to get in line for the undisputed distinction. Okay, so this, this, this is the problem right here. This is Big Femi, Anthony Joshua. 28 wins, 25 kills, three losses. One was by knockout. Damn near, since I said, 90% kill ratio. 6'6", 82-inch reach, right? Right? Now, that's, that's Anthony Joshua. Okay? And then this right here. It's Flip Hergovic. 17 wins, 14 KOs. He's never lost. He got an 82% KO ratio. 
He's six six. His reach, I believe, is eighty two inches as well. This is going to be a problem for Anthony Joshua because Flip Hergovic can touch him. Flip Hergovic is a, has an expanded amateur background. As a pro, he could have been more active, but you know, AJ and Fury and Wilder, man, they kind of you know created a bottleneck in the heavyweight division. And Flip Hergovic was taking step aside money. It wasn't getting this fight. He he kind of got screwed a little bit. But the bottom line is, Flip Hergovic is back active. Um, and I think it's a dangerous fight for AJ because he just fought the Australian guy, Hergovic, and he tranquilized him in the first round. He's coming back now fighting the bar. And then, after, then a couple months after that, because I think he breezes through the bar, then he'll fight AJ. So AJ's going to be in another position where he's facing an and, in an Andy Reid type situation where a guy's coming off of being pretty active, fresh out of a training camp, maybe take a one-week one week break and get right back in training camp and then roll into the AJ fight. That is a problem. But nonetheless, a AJ, something really good could happen for AJ. Eddie Hearn said that Usyk and Fury, we all know there's a rematch, but he said there could be a chance that Usyk isn't ready to fight by the the con contracted date for the rematch. <clears throat> for the rematch, Eddie said. Eddie Hearn said, if Usyk isn't ready, but Tyson Fury is, that Anthony Joshua is ready to step in and be the replacement opponent to fight Fury, and then the winner of Fury AJ could go on and f face Usyk. Now, when Eddie Hearn says stuff like that, I'm like, man, that sounds like wishful thinking. But at the same time, I know what's in full effect. It's a secret society. And they sure could make some shit like that. Remember, they've been talking about this for a long time. Doesn't mean it's going to happen. But for a long time, Eddie Hearns and even Turkey Allen Sheep mentioned they want Anthony Joshua to face the winner of Fury Usyk. And they were talking about that rematch, possibly pushing the rematch back and just letting the winner face AJ. Now you got Usyk who won, but Usyk's hurt. And I, I don't know how long it's going to take him to heal up. But long story short, the route I think is going to go is AJ facing the winner of Hergovic Dubois. And AJ Hearn is sitting here because he knows the winner between AJ and whoever, Dubois or Hergovic, they get, they're going to get a direct shot at Undisputed. So Hearn just has to make sure that AJ keeps it all together, keeps, uh, keeps sharp, keeps active, stays in the gym, and Ben Davidson keeps AJ focused because this is a close, this, like, this is the closest I think Hearn is going to get to sealing the deal with an undisputed, uh, winning an undisputed distinction with AJ. If AJ drops the ball with fight facing the winner of Hergovic and Dubois, AJ falls back big time, just like Deontay Walter. But you just never know. But I personally think AJ clips those guys. And then he'll go on to face the winner of Fury Usyk in a rematch, and I think he clips them. I, I think AJ is going to end up becoming undisputed. And I may be wrong, but we're just having a conversation. Nope. Nobody knows what's going to happen in the future. I know some of y'all think y'all do. You don't. No one knows. We just have a conversation. And for those who don't take offense to what I said, I'm talking about those who come into my uh, comments and start taking it to the stupid. But long story short, um, that's the direction it's going. Eddie Hearn, I'm telling you, he is happy. He's licking his chops. And it's just unfortunate that the damn IBF is so quick to strip these guys, man. I, I just, I mean, I get it, but I just, I just don't understand. I'm like, damn, that's horrible. But, you know, the the last time there was an undisputed heavyweight champion was in 2000. It was Lennox Lewis. And he ended up getting stripped of his IBF strap. And then he got stripped of another strap because he didn't face his mandatory. So it, it's not uncommon for these guys who have all these titles to get stripped. It's either they want their shit defended against their mandatory or, you know, you got to do something. But the bottom line, the IBF right now, is there's a bit of a pattern there where they're just not stripping fighters. I think first was, I think it was Josh Kelly, then uh, Terrence Crawford. Um, now here it is. Uh, uh, going on with um, Usyk. There was somebody else who had the IBF belt stripped. Somebody else. I can't, I don't know if it was Apatow. I don't know who it was. Someone else went through that same thing. 
and they took the damn IBF belt. Not Devin Haney. I can't. Oh, Boots. No, 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 not Boots. Yeah, Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford. But uh, I thought there was someone else. But anyway, we'll see what happens. But I'm telling you right now, pay attention. I know I am because it's about to get interesting, especially what, what could be happening at the end of the year. If Wilder wins against Zhang, if he beats Jared Anderson, but then you got Wilder, you got AJ, you got Fury Usyk, and you got those four. Then you still got Parker out there, and they, they all start mixing up. You got Cabiel. I'm telling you, man, by the, the time this round robin finishes, maybe by this time next year, it could be all different people in the top one through three spots. And I would not be surprised if that happens. Um, anyway, y'all keep cool. Eddie Hearn knows his, that AJ's in a good position. He's either going to get the damn, had to replace somebody and face either Fury or Usyk, whoever can't make it to the ring for the rematch. I'm thinking Usyk is gonna, the one who needs the most time to recover. Fury and Usyk both have very long training camps. Long training camps. But when you look at the money that's being offered, they may just you know take a little two weeks off and get back in training. That's a lot of money, man. But for Hearn, he's sitting there like, AJ can go that way, or AJ goes to IBF route in end of this year, early next year, he fights somebody for undisputed anyway. The other three sanctioned bodies seem to be on the same accord. It's just the IBF who's just like, they, they kind of have an independent operation, and they really don't give a damn. But anyway, let's just sit back. Eddie Hearn is more excited than, I, than he's been. He's got Deontay Water over there. He's got AJ getting busy. He has... You know, a huge stake in a 140-pound division with the guys he's picked up. So Eddie Hearn's in a good good space, and he he, he knows it. We just got to wait and see how everything plays out now. Y'all keep cool him in the breeze.